Hello, my name is Matt Gracie and I'm an engineer on the professional services team at Security Onion Solutions. This video is about tuning your Security Onion deployment using the Berkeley Packet Filter, or BPF. BPF is a function of the Linux kernel that allows us to exempt specific network traffic from being processed by Security Onion. While Security Onion is a great platform for visibility across your enterprise, sometimes there's traffic that's not helpful to us as analysts and incident responders, and it's best not to collect it at all. I'm going to talk a little bit about use cases and show you how to use SALT and BPF to properly tune your Security Onion installation to accommodate them. Let's get started. Perhaps our most common use case for using BPF to tune Security Onion is exempting SSL encrypted web traffic from being recorded in packet captures. As you know, all data that passes through a monitoring port in Security Onion is processed in three different ways by default. It's recorded to disk using Steno for later retrieval as packet captures. It has metadata about the connection or the network flow generated by Zeek or Suricata. And it's compared to Suricata's IDS rules list to look for potential threats or malicious traffic. All three of these components are individually addressable via BPF. So we could put in a rule that says, don't record any of the packet captures, but continue to generate Zeek metadata about them for threat hunting purposes. After all, those packet captures for SSL encrypted web traffic aren't very useful to us as investigators, and we can save a significant amount of disk space by not storing them. Let's take a look at this example. A user has gone to securityonionsolutions.com, has generated a Zeek event, and the Zeek event contains all of the normal stuff. We've got our SSL server name, our cipher type, the JAW3 hashes that were generated, etc. So it's just a standard SSL connection to an SSL enabled web server. But if we pivot and look at the PCAP, there's really nothing in here that's useful for us. There's no way that we can decrypt this and, and analyze it. It's just taking up disk space. So what we want to do is tell stenographer, if anything matches port 443, don't bother to record it. We're only going to apply this rule to stenographer not to Zeek or Suricata. So it will still have metadata generated and it will still have uh, that IDS check, but it just won't be recorded to disk. If you're in a large enterprise, this can save you a lot of time and allow you to retain your other PCAPs for much, much longer. To do this, we just have to update our salt configuration file. So we'll go to opt so salt stack local pillar. And in here we have the global.sls file. Edit that. Go down to the bottom. And add a configuration stanza. So steno bpf not host, I'm sorry, not port 443. Then we apply the salt state. This will take a moment. It picks up our new connection. And now we will not record 443 traffic. So to see what that looks like, here's a second accessing of that site after we change the rule. You see, we still have all the same metadata. We have the server name, all the SSL stuff, the JAW3 hashes, etc. But if we attempt to pivot to PCAP now, it says no data available. So it's still generating all the same metadata. It's still comparing it against all the same IDS rules. It's just not recording the packet capture. With 80 to 90% of web traffic being encrypted these days, this will save you a lot of disk space and allow you to retain your other PCAPs even longer. Now, if you have an additional port that you use internally, so for example, uh, 8443 is a common one, you can add another rule apply the state again Okay, and that's applied, and now it will also ignore traffic on port 8443. Again, still generate metadata, still compared against those IDS rules, 
but it won't bother recording it in your packet captures and save you a lot of disk space. So that's our most common use case, not recording encrypted traffic. Another common use case for using BPF to tune Security Onion is exempting your vulnerability scanning or purple teaming infrastructure from being evaluated against those Suricata IDS rules. Uh, by necessity, just as a matter of their function, a vulnerability scanner is going to generate an awful lot of malicious looking traffic and you don't want those false positives to overwhelm your alert panel and your analysts. So if you want, you can exempt those scanner IPs using a BPF rule. In this example, we have a source of 192.168.1.5 that is running what appears to be uh, SSH scans. So if we assume that that is our vulnerability scanning platform, what we can do is go back to our manager, edit our global.sls file, and add a rule at the end saying, this time for NIDs for the network IDS, BPF, please disregard, so not host 192.168.1.5. We save that. Restart our Suricata process. Uh, if we were doing this in a distributed deployment, then we would use salt to restart the Suricata process on our forward nodes, but this example machine is just a standalone. Uh, it'll apply that new BPF rule and it will exempt any traffic coming from 192.168.1.5 from being evaluated as potentially malicious against those IDS rules. Again, this is going to allow list all traffic from that IP. So make sure that that's actually what you want to do. Uh, there are other tools available if you just want to tune it for a specific rule. But if you want everything from that IP to be exempt from Suricata evaluation, this is the way that you would do it. Finally, you may sometimes have a need to exempt an entire network from observation and security onion. Sometimes this might be for compliance reasons, where you don't want to accidentally retain any data from this network, or it may be for technical reasons, if you have a network dedicated to some subset of devices that you're monitoring using a different technology. In any case, you can use a BPF rule set to exempt it from observation using Zeek, Suricata, and PCAP. Let's go back into our global.sls file, go down to the bottom, and we just need to add configurations for all of them using the net syntax and CIDR notation. So we're adding another rule, so we'll add a double ampersand for and, not net, uh, just to make up a network. 192.168.3.0 slash 24. So anything in that network will be ignored by stenographer. Now we will add the same thing to our NIDS BPF. Remember, we're using YAML, so spaces, no tabs. And finally, since we don't have a stanza for it yet, we'll add one for Zeke. And there we go. We've now added not net 192.168.30 slash 24 for Stenographer, Suricata, and Zeek. The next time our Security Onion installation runs a high state, it will take that configuration information, it will add that BPF to all three of those services, and those endpoints will be ignored and the traffic will not be recorded or evaluated. A few things to keep in mind as you look at using BPF to tune your Security Onion deployment. First of all, BPF rules are not protocol aware. They allow you to block traffic from being processed based on its network, its host, or its port. But what that traffic actually is, uh, is irrelevant. So if you use that rule that we demonstrated earlier about not recording port 443 traffic, the server is not going to record port 443 traffic, whether it's the expected HTTPS traffic or whether it's somebody using it illicitly or against standards and sending plain text information. Uh, there's no allowance in there for identifying the traffic. It's either on or off. 
Uh, there are more fine-grained tuning options available for some specific use cases. So for example, if you have a server that occasionally generates some traffic that throws a false positive in Suricata, BPF is probably too big of a hammer to bring down on that. Uh, you probably want to do some basic thresholding or, or other rule tuning uh, for that particular use case. Unless it's a torrent of false positives like you would get from a vulnerability scanner, you're probably better off tuning the individual rule rather than blocking all that traffic from being evaluated. Because every time you set a host to not be evaluated, obviously you're, you're generating a blind spot in your network visibility. Uh, BPF rules can be set per minion. The examples that I was using were in the global.sls file, which means they were grid-wide. But if you need to, you can edit individual minion files to add these BPF directives, and that will work just fine. Uh, the only thing to be aware of is if you're setting, say, a rule for Steno, make sure you put it in the existing Steno configuration stanza in the minion file instead of creating a new one, or else Salt won't know what to do. Finally, more documentation is available on the Security Onion website, both for this BPF stuff and for other fine-grained tuning options. There's a whole tuning section on our documentation site, and I would suggest reviewing that. Okay, thanks very much. I hope this video was helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, please join our GitHub discussion forum and ask.